it is an immense honor to be among the first to welcome you to Ticket Moon Plains, the newest map coming here to Wade Hunter, and also to introduce you to the new character named Malachi. And you can see, we're holding the compound bow already. I'm so excited to get to use this thing, but first things first, we're gonna head out and explore this brand new map. And there's gonna be a bunch of videos in the coming days. If you don't know, this map releases on all platforms on August 11th, so just in two days. And I'm planning on doing two videos a day up until that point and probably through the weekend. So we'll be spending a bunch of time here. And already, we've got something down here by the water, 300 yards out. And it looks like probably Springbuck. So there's an icon in the top right. There's like an eyeball icon. It must be just kind of indicating the hunter senses on. I like that because I've many times had it on by accident. And frankly, there are a bunch of other quality of life changes that we'll try to go over throughout the video. But it looks like as far as our spring buck go, the best one to maybe take out is this guy right here, a one star mature. And the wind is decent. So I think we're going to try to call him in. The antler rattler is actually the proper call for spring buck. And I'm guessing as one star mature, he's going to be low fitness. So we shall see if that gets him coming in. He stood up, so probably a good sign. What's maybe less of a good sign is there's a one star adult and one star young coming in behind him. But I do want to talk about the bow. We probably need to hit one more call here, but I really like what they've done. I spent quite a bit of time doing some practice reps at the Nez Perce uh, range because I really wanted to get this right. And what I think is so cool about it, when we draw this back, we see the zeroing for all three pins on the left. Now, the top pin is 27 yards. He is probably approaching that range. Maybe when he clears that brush, we'll try to go for this. And there is a little crosswind, so we're gonna wanna aim a, just a little bit to the left. That looked good, and it looks like he's stumbling already. So it looks like our first shot's gonna be a kill shot. And the other cool thing now, the way that the bows work, these Springbuck, they're alerted, but they're not just gonna immediately flee because this guy only ran maybe 10 yards and went down and as far as i know the way this early access works this will be like our main save so actually taking these low fitness males out will benefit us in the long run now i imagine i know what you're thinking and you probably want to see the 60 yard pin in action he's already just inside of 60 yards but i'm gonna turn on 100 cents for this just to deal with the wind and i can barely even see it Looks like we smoked him. There's a ton of blood there. And even at that, that young spring buck didn't spook. Still alerted, but it didn't actually send him running. You know, this is a huge potential change for Way the Hunter. And it could be like a real incentive to actually use archery equipment. So gonna go for that shot. That completely smoked him. And we just killed all three of the low fitness males in this herd. That sentence right there is the key to what I'm talking about and kind of the changes to spooking being really, really good for archery hunting. So let's go ahead and try to clean up here. And also in the meantime, take a moment to appreciate the models. What I always find is when I actually get up close to all the models in Way the Hunter, they end up looking far better than I think. But we hit the lung, liver, intestine, stomach. This bow is tiers two to six. And I purchased it for 3800 so it's not a bad price to do, I mean, that. Pretty much went all the way through a spring buck. He was a 27%, so no doubt they'll get a lot bigger than that. And that kind of explains the lack of hooks in these horns. Such a low percentage male like that probably wouldn't even grow any, but that's going to be one of three. And we may do some taxidermy today at some point to check out the trophy lodge, but... This, I think, was the young that we dropped. Lung, liver, intestines, again, basically the exact same shot at 45 yards. So that was the one. He was a 27% as well. And like I said, assuming this actually does work like I think, and we'll get to keep this save when the map actually comes out, this stuff is going to be really important and go a long way towards getting trophies in the future. But sending the rest of the herd running, there are some other males in there, I'm pretty sure. Got another one-star young. I thought there was a one-star adult that didn't come in. So there's some in there that aren't as low genetic potential, but I'm curious if we're gonna have three 27s in the one herd. 
This one we shot a little high there, and it was difficult to even see where the 100 cents dot was in that site, but he was a 29%, so not so great genetics here, and really that's not a huge surprise. I'm pretty sure if we looked around and found the right direction, we're probably still in view of the outpost. It's right there. Oh, and we got a Cape Buffalo. A whole herd of them, they're just out here. I'm surprised they're that close to where we start, and they called to even let us know they were there. Now, the question is, do we just go 300, or do we try to stock into range with the bow? The wind is just terrible here, so I think we might just try to get one, but let's get this zone. Warthog zone, so apparently they're in this area too, and we'll try to pick a male that would be worth taking out. Gotta be tough, they're all kind of stacked up in there, but we'll take a moment and try to spot everything. And I think we just found our target, a one-star mature K-Buffalo walking out of there last, and he's actually relatively broadside. Kind of quartering too, I'm almost tempted to try it. And then of course he's gonna face right at us, so either we're gonna wait for him to lift his head, or he's gonna bed down right there, okay. That's what we're looking for right there. That dropped him? I really wonder what we hit, but I gotta think. Maybe they're a little bit more like moose then? Because I don't think we hit the spine or anything like that. Now maybe we caught the artery right above the heart. That would be the only thing I could imagine that would really, you know, drop a Cape Buffalo. But that seems pretty insane. And I think we just got their zone. That was what I was going to look for. But... It very much reminds me of Moose over on Nez Perce. When we first got started, dropping them in their tracks seemed so insane as well. But you really see the difference here between hunting with a rifle and hunting with a bow. There were probably multiple Cape Buffalo in the herd that we could have taken out. And we were, because of using the gun, only able to get one. Versus when we used the bow, we got everything we wanted for the Springbuck. That was just double lung, no artery or anything. And really, even the first lung we hit was well below the recommended energy. Now, I can't tell. It looks like the leg bones are kind of bugging out back there on the back legs, but 27%, lots of low 20s here. But I really like the models. You can really see like all the little folds in the skin. Uneven horns as well. You see the hook on this side a lot more prominent than this one. I cannot wait to see a five-star Cape Buffalo, but I like how notably gray the matures are. Like most species in Way of the Hunter, they're distinguishable. So just a brief pit stop here. We have some Egyptian keys standing around, and maybe we can use the bow for them. Now, I'd really like to get to a point where we just don't use the hunter sense for any archery hunting, because I feel like that gets rid of half the point. Wind is blowing to the left. That works. Oh, and there were way more hinder than I thought. That's a wild sound they make. I highly doubt we're going to be able to actually spot everything in here, but yeah, as they're going over the trees, we're going to get to spot two or three geese basically at the back. So maybe we'll come back to the spot to make sure there was nothing special. I just wanted to get one and take a look at them because they are quite interesting looking. Really, really nice models for them. They might be the best bird models in the game. Kind of hit almost through the guts if the small game models had intestines. They really only have heart, brain, and flesh. But, 57% adult. What a cool looking bird though. For this one, we might actually mount it. I highly doubt we're gonna kill another one today. And I wanna maybe see what poses are out there. So now we have that, and we can just keep on moving through. Are those more or the same ones? So we kinda got caught up in there just suddenly being animals right outside the lodge there, but I did want to take a moment to just appreciate the map, because just look at this. It is amazing what they've created, and we have not seen 2% of it yet. I really can't wait to go around and explore, but I just wanted to show it from like a bird's eye view, because it is really, really well designed. Oh, no way. We just spooked a bunch of greater kudu. I don't think any of them are huge, because they all look to be about the same size. Even the one stars, though. Oh, that's a three-star adult. You are kidding me. Hold on a minute. Okay, so we don't have a zone for them. And I say that because until we kill one or get a zone, we can't actually look in the encyclopedia and figure out how long they live, but... Future five-star kudu? And I'm 
like, <laughs> shocked again that we're 170 yards from the outpost. They were right down here. Not only do I think that's them, I think that's specifically him right behind that mature female. Now, as much as I want to just shoot one with the 300, go and claim it, and find out their age cycles, I do think it could be really fun to call them in and try to take one with a bow. That's our three-star adult. So, I don't know if there was a mature in there, but hopefully we can call in maybe like a low fitness one-star adult or something like that, and we'll try to get into like 200 and go ahead and hit that call. I believe it's the same as the Springbok one, the Antler Rattler. And we'll see, I think that could be a really cool animal to kill with a bow. Okay, so, accidentally, we're calling in a two-star adult Black Wildebeest. Now, I realized the call I was using is the wrong one. The Antler Rattler is for Wildebeest, Springbok, and stuff like that. It's actually the Deer Grunt that calls in Kudu. I would love to shoot that with a bow because we know we're not gonna spook our Kudu, but a two-star adult is also a relatively good sign, so I think we're just gonna let him walk away and come back to the spot, but I love that there's black wildebeest in this game and on this map. I really want to hunt one, just not that one. Well, the cool thing is, because none of these things will respond to a caller, we've managed to kind of sneak up here and get into this position where we can take some really cool screenshots and again, just kind of appreciate the models of the Greater Kudu, they might be the best we've seen so far. Just backing this up a little bit. They look amazing. And again, to consider that is a three-star adult. He looks huge already. I can't imagine five stars. And frankly, I think we're looking at a future five-star. But maybe we can pick one out here that we actually do want to take. Like, that's a pretty small-looking one that evidently is an adult. Now, we're 70 yards away. We can't call him in anymore. The wind is not bad, and we do have a 60-yard pin, so maybe we'll use the crutch of 100 cents again. I think we're looking at the right one. That is showing like it's going to drop a lot, though. And I guess the wind is coming back at us, so maybe it makes sense. I don't know. I, I, ooh. Okay. I don't know what this one is, but maybe we take him instead. It's still, they're all just coming this way suddenly. It's still going to be a huge drop. But we might just have lucked into something really good here. I'm afraid of, like, getting the binoculars and spotting stuff, but let's just take a second. Figure out what's what. That's a young, so we don't want to shoot that. That's our big guy. I mean, if we just wait, surely we're going to get a chance here. It is getting chaotic. There's a one-star adult. I think it's the one that we've got the reticle on. But the three-star is standing just behind him. we got to be so careful to get the shot in there and not have the three-star get hit. There's a slight window in there, and of course there's gonna be some others walking in front of them. This is insane. Okay, everything's clearing out of the way. That looked perfect, and we can see when we're close enough, everything spooks. I think we smoked him, I'm pretty sure. I just saw him kind of stumble behind this brush. I don't even know if he came out of there, let's see. Blood is right there, looks good in pink, and I mean at 27 yards, that would be what we expect. We did get him. And it looks like he, maybe he went out that way. I thought I saw him go behind the brush. But here he is. And that was probably the coolest bow hunting experience we've had in Way the Hunter thus far. And we shot a one-star adult. Like, those opportunities just don't present themselves that often. Hit him kind of high in the lungs, which it was 30 yards away. I don't remember if we aimed high necessarily, but plenty of room above the arrow too. And that actually too... Like, plenty of energy, even as it's hitting the second lung. Not bad. That was a 50.11%, and it is interesting they didn't actually come into the call, but it doesn't completely shock me. I've had a number of species that really they don't respond to too many calls until they're mature. Some species do, some don't. Kudu might be one that don't typically respond until they are mature, and we shall see, I hope, with our three-star. And speaking of that, now that we've shot one, and we can go and get another if we absolutely need to. We should be able to see the age cycle for them. Oh, and it's very short. Five to eight. I wonder if it's, like, due to predation and stuff, that they live that, like, short of a lifespan? So a three-star adult, then, maybe isn't a guaranteed five-star. He would still have, what, um, four years, really, to gain those last two stars? We're going to have to keep a really close eye on that, because it's going to go fast. And this time, 
we might actually have a chance to take a Black Lord Beast. Now, we're not going to do nothing but Bow Hunt today, so we may try to take one of these with the 300. I love the horns on them. They're so unique, like almost unlike anything else out there. But is there any of these that actually we can take? There's one behind this one star young. The rest, I think, are females, and much like in the last spot, two star adult for that. Now, I wonder, maybe do they have the same or similar A cycle to Kudu? I want to try to spot that one behind him, because I'm pretty sure that's a male. That's what we want right there, a one star adult. He's just kind of trotting around, though. I don't really know where he's going. I think that's him right there. Now, again, Kind of like the Kudu, getting a shot at him is going to be potentially a different matter. I think that's going to work. Not a great angle, pretty nice animation there. And it looks like it got him good enough. I can't wait to take like a close-up look at the models for them. Because like I said, they are just so, so unique. And if I'm not mistaken, those out there are blue wildebeest. One looked kind of big too. That is 100% what those are, and that guy right there, like, he's pretty gray, and he looks pretty big. Let's take a moment, appreciate the Black Little Beast. There's a couple of cutie here that we're probably going to spook off, but then I want to go and check that out. It's like a non-stop, just, array of animals out here, but even, like, down to the tuft of fur on the bridge of the nose there, everything on this just looks perfect. The coloration, the horns, like... I think they are just such a neat animal. That guy was 49%, so good to take him out as well. But there's just, as far as I know, almost nothing else out there that looks like that. Just really, really neat. Almost similar like a horse with horns. Just super, super unique. Let's go and see, though, what we are looking at if we get spun around in the right direction with that wildebeest. That's gotta be him, a three-star mature. And again, we kinda run into this situation like, we haven't shot one, we don't have a zone from one, and therefore we don't know how long they're actually going to live. So what we might do instead is shoot the one-star adult and at least try to find out. So let's go for that. I was gonna use a bow, but we just did that with the kudu and then took a long time to actually get up there and find that out. So let's go and see. And if it is the case that maybe they have a short lifespan, we could go and get that three star and possibly put him in the lodge. For a one star, that actually doesn't look that bad. I mean, it maybe wasn't the best idea to take it, but with that three star standing there, it's just so hard to know. At least with this, it will tell us the age cycle in the encyclopedia. We ended up actually pretty much getting a heart shot, decent bit of heart damage, and then double lung from the 300. This guy was a 40%, so actually good to take out. And by the way, I noticed this before. We're on Adventurer. I know we were playing a Hunter prior, so I don't know if it defaulted to that or if I had to change the difficulty when we started the hunt. We'll have to change that. That might be why we're finding so many animals. But the important thing is that gives us the Encyclopedia entry for the Blue Wildebeest. Now, are they Class 6? They are Tier 6. So actually, using the 300 was even the correct gun. They live all the way up to 20 years old. Yeah, there's no way we want to kill that three-star mature. He could very well get to five. I mean, basically 10 years of maturity? That's a long time to gain two stars. Oh, and we actually have out here what was the very last species to be revealed here on Ticket Moon Plains, the helmeted guinea fowl. Got a one-star mature as well. It's 70 yards away. Eh, what the heck? I was going to use the bow. Let's just go with the 300. I want to see one. Because this is not something I'm at all familiar with. And if we missed it with a bow, that would be a bit of a shame. But I can guarantee that one's not running anywhere. And just kind of based on behavior, I think they're going to be pretty similar to pheasants. They kind of flush, maybe fly a little bit, and then land again. So I think they're going to be hunted very, very similarly. So maybe even carrying a shotgun out here. This is one of those things I was thinking with the addition of the bows. It might be about time to finally had like a third weapon slot because it's getting tough to carry all the stuff that we'd ideally want look at that thing 49 percent. so again good to take that out although once our mature we'd expect it that is a crazy looking creature 
I can't wait to maybe hunt for more of them as well. Zero credits shooting that with a 300, but good to know that's going to be, you know, kind of how they're hunted. Like pheasant, you should be able to approach them pretty easily. So had we known that, I bet we could have walked right up to them and gotten our shot off. Oh, and a honey badger. I totally forgot they were on this map. So again, kind of like the helmeted guinea fowl we just shot, you can typically get pretty close to these things. I kind of feel like we're going to have to shoot one, even if it's maybe not the smartest decision, depending on what's here. And that's exactly what I thought was going to happen. There's a one-star young. Now, some of the other badgers on like Transylvania and Nez Perce, they'll travel in pretty good-sized groups. I only see the two. It can't hurt that bad. Let's go ahead and shoot this guy. If it ends up being a big one, I guess we'll just kind of deal with it. It was a little over 200 yards. Small target hit. Did it just take a 300 round? There's no way it's going to survive that, is there? And we spooked a whole bunch of something. What are those, Gemsbuck? Okay, mistakes were made. I would have liked to have... Gone for them? Are the... There's stuff running everywhere. Those are wildebeest, so forget about them. We already got one. I've really wanted to see these gens back up close. Where are they headed? Slowing down right up in there? We'll revisit that in a minute. And I have no idea where the badger was now, but... Somewhere out this way? And by the way, you can see... We did hit him with the 300 round. And he still ran a decent ways, but... Pretty nice model for them. Small game models typically in Wade Hunter aren't quite as detailed, but the closer you get to them, like I mentioned with some other stuff, the better they tend to be. Now, I guess we did miss the first time, because it looks like we hit him on the move, and I'm pretty sure he was sitting still when we took that first shot. That was a 69%, so probably would have gotten to three or four star. At least we didn't kill a future five. They are cool looking, though. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a honey badger and... Egyptian Goose multi-mount, so we might tax that too, because that's another one I don't expect to kill more of today. One thing I do expect to spend a little more time going after are the Gensbuck. I see one, and the wind isn't great. I wouldn't mind trying to use the bow again here, so we'll probably want to come up actually behind them. You know, another cool thing about the collars and the way the bows work now, we can start off with like a low fitness call, and potentially wipe out subpar genetics in the herd. And in this situation, where everything is down over the hill, we've spotted like one female, and obviously this one star adult. There might be a high fitness one in there, and so long as we make a decent shot here, I think we could just swap to a high fitness call and bring stuff like that in. I really like incentivizing bow hunting, but this guy is approaching 30 yards. I think the animation's a little bit screwed up when you're crouched. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's make sure we get this right. The wind is blowing to the left. Actually slowing down a little bit. Basically center chest. Oh my god. Did he try... So there's aggression now. <laughs> Was he trying to run us over or not? I don't know. And by the way, he's still not gone down yet. But it didn't bother any of the other ones. So I guess it's really not even about how far they run. It's just if the rest of the herd is far enough away that they don't hear the initial shot. That is interesting, but we're going to try a few high fitness calls, see if anything comes in. And if not, at least we got our one against Buck out of that herd. And with nothing coming in, we actually kind of have the rare opportunity to kill three birds with one stone. This guy's been down here making noise. He's a one-star adult warthog, one of the species that we have not gotten to see yet. And unfortunately, we're going to have to go long range on this, so 300 it is. One thing I'll be really curious to see is the actual size of them in terms of like, wait, do we make a decent shot there? He is flying out of there. I felt like it was decent. Let's mark that. We'll have to go back and see. The reason I said three birds with one stone, by the way, there's a campsite right up here. So following these Gensbug actually led us right to that and the Warthog. And by the way, I mentioned the bow animation. When you're standing up, Knocking the arrow is perfectly fine, but when you do it while crouched, it looks like the arrow's not actually in the hand, but anyway, our first Gensbuck, do we shoot it at that kind of angle? It looks like it went up through the shoulder blades. I mean, it was high, I guess. 
probably not that high. That's interesting the way that is, but it might be actually the way that he was laying. Not too bad, though. It was somehow double lung. Just that slight angle there. Looks like he got it into the back of the right lung. Already ran all, and he still ran for quite some time. That was a 48%, so not too bad. Go ahead and sell that. I was able to locate as well. The Warthog's laying right down there. So we'll go and get our campsite. And we're slowly closing in on killing everything on this map. I think there's 13 species. If I'm not mistaken, we are at 10. And frankly, I'm going to have to take a minute and like write everything down. Because I don't know what we haven't shot yet. It might actually be only lions and hyenas. By the way, speaking of lions and hyenas, I feel like that's why this campsite is designed like this. Keeping predators out, like little details like that, that really make you feel like you're actually in the area. They're so, so cool, but I'm thinking we must be 11 species counting the warthog. I think we should be able to see everything today. I don't know where those last two might be. Found the Gensbuck again, but hopefully we can find them. Little tusk on that guy for a one-star adult, which probably means it was a good decision. Smoked him too, like right through the top of the lungs. I was really impressed like how far he ran from that. And 31% by the way, good to take him out. I like that model, the animation's good too. Just like a, a really minor thing again. They're gonna look good, the, the difference too. I love to see stuff like this. There's a major difference in the tusks. I can't wait to see a big one of them, but this is definitely where probably some balancing needs to happen. We double along to Cape Buffalo. And it dropped, double owned the Warthog, same weapon, actually from further away, and it absolutely took off like a shot and ran like almost 300 yards. That's what we want to see. We got a lion out there 600 yards away, and he's just kind of walking up that hill. Now, I realized there's actually 12 species on the map, so we have killed 10, and we are down to just lions and hyenas to go. Took a little bit of going back through Steam and re-familiarizing myself with all the species. I really just want to shoot it there, but if it's a four-star mature or something, I'd be pretty crushed if we shot it, so we gotta go and check on the rating. And moment of truth, a one-star adult, which seems perfect, not only to try to get, but to try to call in and get with a bow. Now, we have the collar. We'll see if it'll actually respond. I'm hoping low fitness, that would be ideal, but if we got to switch to high fitness and he comes in, we'll still try to take him. That was interesting. He called back at that and he is going to come in. So that means he's low fitness, which is exactly what we want. We don't want to be taking out high fitness lions out here because a five star lion with a bow, maybe other than the Cape Buffalo, is the absolute dream kill out here. And this should be good practice. Look at that. That is so cool. I wanted to bring the camera up here. And get a close look at him. But I also don't want to let him get too close. When we were doing the Black Wolf mission over on Transylvania. He actually ended up spooking from further away than I would have guessed. So I want to keep a very close eye on what this guy does. And what I've noticed basically every time it gets pretty much to the point that we need to call again. He'll typically pause and kind of look around just like that. So I'm going to call one last time. And my hope is. We can get him to do that once more right around 20 yards. So let's get the bow ready. Again, aggression is a thing in Wade Hunter now. So we could very much be setting ourselves up for failure here. Can I get to full draw? I don't want to use Hunter Sense here. Might let him get a little closer. I think he might be getting to that point. Let's see if we can do this. Turning just a little there. Wind is going to the right. Okay, that looked good. Looks like we smoked him. <laughs> I was already prepared to just run the other direction, but that got him good. Let's see how far he's going to run. Just up there? I thought I heard, like, another footstep, too, when we were standing here. Maybe not? That was really impressive. Now, we may have heart shot him, because there's a ton of blood here. And I really... You can just see the size of him laying over there like the... The scale seems correct to me. What did we just do? I want to get a, a photo of this, actually. That is pretty darn cool. I really like how that turned out. So let's see. I'm more interested in the shot than the actual size of the animal. And we did. We smoked him straight in the heart. 
at 25 yards. It took a bit of patience because we drew back too early. I really was getting worried that he might flee after all that time spent calling him in. But a perfect shot. Through the heart, got the right lung in there as well. That is so cool. Our first line, he's a fairly low percentage one too, so good to take out. But we got him with the bow. And much like a couple of the other things we've taxidermized today, we're going to put him in the lodge just so we can take a look and see what it looks like back there. Maybe some of the potential multi-mounts and stuff. I wouldn't be shocked again if those few species that we have mounted, there could be some multi-mounts there. We also, since we've shot one, have the ability to look at the age cycles for them. And I do want to know, they get up to 16 years old. And it's actually 1 to 2 for young, 3 to 5 for adult. And then they're mature for about 10 years. So if you spot a mature lion, even like a 2 star, it might have a chance of getting all the way up to 5 by the end. Ooh. I think we've got something here. There's a 2 star adult lion and a 3 star mature. I don't even know that anything in here should be shot right now. But this is the first time we've actually found a Pride Alliance. We need to get their zone for sure. And I'll probably try to mark that on the map and screenshot it. It's so much more, like, encouraging and just... I want to spend more time out here in early access because this actually counts for the long run, at least I think. So, definitely going to try to go and get that zone. But everything's either young or really promising older lions. Let's just run them out of there and get the zone. Really, really looking forward to what comes out of there. That's their often zone as well. So now we have that. Going to just mark this location and screenshot the map. And by the way, just to show, we have explored basically nothing today. There's a huge amount of this map that we haven't even seen. And you know, we still haven't found hyenas, but everything else, has been down here in this southeast part, which is pretty cool. That's a fairly solid looking kudu, hold on. I was actually looking at the steam page, trying to figure out what I was missing when I was thinking there were 13 species, and the screenshot on steam, I believe is a five star kudu, and they are huge. So I don't think that is potentially one, but I do wanna go and see what it is. I mean, as big as he was, he's just a two star adult. Pretty good to know, though. We're not going to shoot that either, because it'll take some time to learn what we do want to take, but I think it's going to be kind of like Whitetail. Two and three star adults, you just leave and hope for the best. One star adults, maybe we could consider, but good to know. It seems we have decent quality kudu genetics out here. And finally, we've got some hyenas out here. It took quite some time, but we get to see the final species here on Ticka Moon Plains that we hadn't yet encountered. And... I really want to see if we maybe call them in, like if we can get any kind of vocalization, because I am willing to bet that there's something cool that we could hear. That one there, or actually maybe even two of them, they look a little bit older than the rest. So we'll try to scoot into where we can spot, make a decision as to whether or not we want low or high fitness calls, and we'll see if calling them in elicits any vocalizations. That's what I wanted to hear. That was actually a female. I'm not sure if she'd be coming into a low fitness call necessarily, but what I did see is a one star mature. So I think actually we've done a good bit of bow hunting today. We might as well go ahead and take this guy with the 300. And then maybe what we can do is tax that for a bit of a placeholder. He took just a slight step forward there. Looks like we got him. But again, just on the off chance that there's a multi-mount we could do with that. All 12 species here on Ticket Moon Plains, it took about two hours and 45 minutes, and just to show a little bit of like, kind of progress on the map, we've moved a decent bit. I took the side by side up through here just to cover a little ground, but there's still so much to explore. And also keep in mind, we have played today on adventurer mode, so stuff would be a little less likely to spook, and we probably did encounter more animals than we would have on hunter mode. And hopefully next time I can remember to switch the difficulty before we get started, but that was a double lung shot. Just a 38%. Pretty nice little models on them. You see like the the way the back is kind of slanted? I just like that they've done that correctly. That's really cool. So let's tax him as well. Just again, if we get the opportunity to set up some kind of multi-mount with that, we'll have it. And let's jump back and see what we can do. And this trophy lodge 
is so, so nice. There's a ton of space for different mounts. I mean, even just right inside the door here, we have a couple of plaques there. To scoot through this door real quick, which by the way, this is where you do your inventory and stuff, there are just wall plaques absolutely everywhere. Got a little alien guy over this door. I don't know if this one leads directly outside. It does. There's more alien references as well, which I'm guessing will kind of play out through the story. Which, by the way, one last thing I gotta talk about before we end is the difference between free hunt and story mode. But as for the mounts, we have our lion and honey badger here. I'm really glad this is a mount because honey badgers aren't exactly known for being bashful, so attacking a lion seems to make perfect sense. And this being kind of the centerpiece, there's a ton of great options. By the way, I wanted to show this too. For whatever reason, they've added a date to this, but it says that we shot it on February 5th of 2021. I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe there's something screwed up there. Hopefully that can be fixed because I think that's a great idea to add the date there. Kind of jog your memory on which five star a particular one might be. But to go through the options, we have things like lions chasing a warthog. We've got just 2k buffalo here, three Gensbuck, three greater kudu. There is one that I really like, two lions attacking a Kate buffalo. I think this is the dream mount for me. And even more options as we go down through here. Just some really cool stuff as that kind of centerpiece mount. Then we have our hyena over on this side. I didn't realize just how nice these models were. When you get really close, the level of detail is just really stunning. I like them a lot. That'll be another thing that maybe we target more than I expected to. And I mentioned these guys, the Egyptian geese. I think these are the best waterfowl models in the entirety of Way the Hunter. I mean, the coloration, the way those colors blend, like it's just really seamless. And just the model itself, it just looks perfect. I really want to spend some time looking for five-star geese because I want to have some in this lodge. They look really, really good. By the way, right here beside this, I think it's over here on this side, there is this little fella. Shama, it's me, you know, your benevolent yet sociopathic alien overlord. So I'm not sure what all this is about. Like I said, it will probably play out in the story mode. And speaking of that, we're going to jump back to the main menu to talk about that. So basically, there are a couple of different options. There is the story mode in which you do like the missions. For instance, if you did story mode, you'd play as River on Nesper's Valley. You'd play as Malachi, our new character here on Tickaboon Plains. In Free Hunt, you can actually choose your character, difficulty, all that. So if we want, we can play as Wallace right here on Tickaboon Plains. And just before I forget, we're going to go ahead and change the difficulty over there to Hunter. So let's jump in as Wallace. And as you can see, if you want to do that, you can absolutely do that. I think that's a great idea and it keeps your inventory and stuff set up. The characters aren't separate. If we jump in here to the Trophy Lodge, we'll see the Lion, Honey Badger and stuff that we just shot. And I just think it adds another level to this game. Whoever you want to play as, you can do that. I think the list goes from River to Jackie from Aurora Shores, obviously Malachi here, Wallace, I think April from the Nez Perce story as well. Lots of character options you can play as and you can do story or free hunt. We'll probably mostly do free hunt and eventually we'll go through and do the missions, but I don't know how long this video has been, probably long enough. I have been just having a blast here on Ticket Moon Plains, and like I said, there will be very much more content to come in the coming days and even later on today when we come back to this map. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video, so as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.